Hey there, Oconiacs. We finally know who killed Bunny. There is a lot to go over and a murder outside of the building that's going to make the next season something else. Let's not get too far. First, we must decode only murders in the building. This episode was great. Many twists and turns leading to the conclusion. It started out with the narration by Becky Butler, living a mundane life, seeing who we all know as Poppy without glasses and her iconic black hair and bangs was a bit wild to me. I feel like Becky was a totally different person. She even had a different cadence in her voice. It was more relaxed and didn't seem to be as uptight. But as we saw, she wanted to get out of her life. I don't know why she put herself out there so much. She could have just continued to be a missing person, but she went to send a years after her disappearance in order to make a podcast about herself. But once Cinder was on board and there was renewed interest in the case, she then went back home with Cinder where she would meet Detective Krebs. Now, there's a lot of things I don't understand here. Like, how did she go about telling Krebs that she's the person that they were looking for? That had to be an awkward conversation. I wonder if Krebs was in it from the beginning. I could be wrong, but I don't think we'll ever find out. Granted, Becky looks very different than she did before she disappeared, but the population in the city is only about 16,000, and the chances that she would be noticed, especially in a popular place like the Chicken Chug, I'd think there'd be pictures of her all around, and someone would notice her. Either way, that mayor was a creep, and he probably deserves jail time. He's probably done some really messed up things, but he does not deserve to be in jail for murder. Later, the trio decide that they're going to try and get a confession out of Cinda in order to get more information. The trio goes to Poppy in order to find out things that will make Cinda cave. While talking to Poppy, they find out that Cinda dislikes slow motion and the inside of a tomato. I did not think that this would come back, but... I am so happy that it did. Once everyone jumped in on it, I died laughing. I never would have guessed that a liverwurst and a marmalade sandwich is what would have done Becky, a.k.a. Poppy, in. This coupled with Detective Williams getting Becky's DNA off of the knife pretty much closed the case on her. 14 Sandwich. The 14 sandwich reveal was also very unexpected. Our trio was very lucky. They had to be in the pickle diner with Poppy in order to hear her order it. Becky had to be pretty proud and full of herself to think that she was so smart to do all of this. She didn't need to tell Mabel that she was Becky Butler, but that opened her up to questionable motives. And even if the trio was on her side, she became an integral part of their investigation, and her anger with Cinda not taking her seriously didn't help. It only exacerbated the situation that led to her demise. And that leads us to the killer reveal party. It was a killer party where they just happened to reveal who murdered Bunny. As Cinda mentioned, there was some great Scooby-Doo moments, this is where the show really shined for me. It became more of a detective story, and even Lester got a moment to shine. Howard tried, but we could tell he's not the best actor, and but he is good at feigning. They laid out that Cinder was the killer who needed a killer podcast, and the idea to use three A-list celebrities as the culprit. I theorized this, but really thought it was in order to take out the competition, but that does not seem to be an actual motive for Poppy. They turn the story on its head where Alice is blamed, and it seems as if she may be guilty. Mabel talks about how Alice and her art gallery needs new energy in making art off of Mabel's trauma, using her status to make money. It all came into play. The idea was floated around that 14 for Savage is what Mabel heard, 
And I will say this all made a great twist where we thought this could actually be true. Alice being angry and trying to kill Mabel with a knife just as Bunny was killed. But having Charles jump in the way, saving Mabel, getting stabbed in the process, it was heartbreaking and an emotional scene. We saw what appeared to be him bleed out and die. And in that moment, it all made sense. I thought that it could all be true. I remember reading that Steve Martin said he wouldn't be looking for work after the show, maybe retiring. I was thinking maybe this was a way for him to get written off the show. I will also add that Cara Delevingne did fantastic acting in this whole scene with her being bound to the chair. I felt her anger and it made it feel so real. The supposed death of Charles is a bold gambit, but that led to the real play, a play that will get under the skin of the true killer and in turn make them give themselves up. Cinda talks to Mabel, giving her praise for the work she did, calling her an incredible investigator and telling her that she should have her own podcast. All the things Poppy never got from Cinda. This causes Poppy to go on a tirade, saying that there's nothing tying Alice to Bunny's murder. She sadly cries to Cinda, asking why Mabel gets a podcast and accolades all the things that she wanted from her hero. She has tears in her eyes, and I can see that it really hurt her. But then we hear her sneeze. And she sneezes because she's allergic to Miss Gambolini. And that puts her in Bunny's apartment the night of the murder. And I know the sneeze didn't sound as deep or boisterous as we heard it when Lucy was in the hallways with her. But I realize when we hear sneezes in a passageway, it's a more of an enclosed area of sorts, so the sound would likely reverb off the walls, making it sound different and deeper than it would in the open air room of Bunny's apartment. While being questioned on her sneeze, she really gives herself up saying that no one should believe a kid who was in the walls of the Arconia, and this is something only the killer would know. One thing I never would have guessed was her motive. I really thought that the painting had something more to do with it and that saving the empire was really important. But she just wanted to be a good podcast host herself. Not out of fear of the other podcasts usurping them or even to help Cinda. It was personal ambition. As someone who lived a life as a nobody before, she just wanted to be noticed. A great little tidbit, and I may be reaching, but I think that it was the sneeze that put her DNA on the knife. It was specifically said that saliva was found, and I don't think that her DNA would even be in the system if she did not talk Cinda into making a podcast about her disappearance, so in the end, she was her own worst enemy in many ways. This is where we find that the trio told Cinda everything and Charles wakes up from the dead. He is a good actor and I almost forgot about him, him popping up. Kind of scared me for a second. But as Cinda knew what was going on and Poppy and Detective Kreps are arrested, this became a great ending for only murders in the building and only murderers in the building. A little bit later, we see Charles gets out of his wheelchair, and he seems to be getting a more prominent role on Brazos. He even sort of asks Joy out on a date, and it seems he's over Jan and emotionally ready to move on. We see Mabel is moving on too, and at least friends with Alice. I was heartbroken to see her paint over the mural. I love that mural so much, but I understand she needs to do it in order to move forward in life. I also think it's a way to tell us that next season is starting a blank canvas, a whole new story of sorts. The end of season murder didn't even take place in the building, so it's likely that no one on that mural will be a suspect. We then find out that Will knew that Oliver was lying about being his birth father, 
Will states that he knows his father's tells, but didn't care. Again, not the way I thought the series would go, but it was very wholesome, and it still leaves a lot to happen between them all next season if the show decides to go that way. We then found out that Oliver has been asked to direct a show on Broadway, and of course, he accepts. We then fast forward a year. When the show opens, it's called Stage and Show, and it stars Ben Glenroy, played by none other than Paul Rudd. I don't know what this play is about, but it looks to be a noir film, the classic crime dramas made in the 40s and 50s. There's some of my favorite kind of films. Come on, Maltese Falcon. Iconic, one of the best endings of a movie I've ever seen. But for some reason, Ben Glenroy and Charles do not get along. Ben calls Charles a fuckbag, pardon my French, and says that he wants to kill him. And I like the fact that Charles has made the move to stage productions. And of course, Oliver, his friend, got him a part in his play. But I wonder why the two leads of the show dislike each other. Charles tells Ben, be smart. Stay away from her. And Ben asks him why. What will he do if he doesn't? And Charles simply answers, I know what you did. Ben steps out on stage. He's only able to get a few words out before he falls over dead, bleeding from the mouth. I'm already working on a video about who she is that Charles was talking about and what the what is that Ben could have done. Now, I don't think Lucy is Ben's stepdaughter or her real father. I think she would have had a different reaction to hey, seeing him fall Lucy, down on the stage. Where are you? I'm at your place. I think Listen, the you scene that Charles was talking about was Joy, who at this point has likely been dating Charles for a year. She could have possibly have been Ben's makeup artist in the past. Those two likely could have crossed paths in many different places and i'm guessing he likely did something less than honorable as stated before this murder takes place outside of the building and it's likely that the year oliver preps for the show will be the focus of next season i expect our trio to spend lots of time outside of the building even more than they have this season We'll get more into that in another video, and though the season has ended, I'm not done with only murders in the building. i still be making videos. Expect a video on what happened to Ben, seasons, loose ends, and my top moments of the season coming out in the following weeks, and lots of other things as I think of crazy things to make videos about. I'll also be covering some other series. Right now, I can't decide I'm torn between She-Hulk and Yellow Jackets. I've watched the first episode of She-Hulk. I liked it a lot, but I've been told Yellow Jackets is a really great show. I'll probably decide which one I'm going to do a video on by the end of this day. There were quite a few things that were not loose ends, but didn't make any sense to me store-wise, or I know we just won't understand or find out like why did bunny say 14 sandwich instead of poppy or if she didn't know her name why didn't she say podcast girl or something i don't know but why didn't the trio give detective williams the number that pretended to be her i thought that this would have immediately let everyone know that poppy was the person i granted you can't solve the murder that quickly, but I also thought it was interesting that Poppy texted Charles and Oliver, but then, and they had no, and they had no idea who she was, but then later Poppy texts Mabel. So all three of them had her phone number at the same time, but they did not confer with each other or Mabel never messaged that strange number from her phone. So no one had any idea what was going on. I also thought there would be something to Bunny's keys. They kept popping up, but that was nothing. I'm guessing Poppy forced Bunny into Mabel's room with her own keys, but we didn't get clarification on that or how Poppy learned about the secret passageways. 
I made up the idea that maybe she did lots of research because they were talking about how smart she was, thinking maybe she got information from the Arconiacs, including Marv, or maybe Ursula, but we just don't know how she knew about it whatsoever. We also don't know when she stole the painting, and how did she know that Bunny had a Rose Cooper painting in the first place? If she was the only person messaging Bunny about the painting, why on earth would she send her a card saying, I want that painting, Bunny Folger? Was that not from Poppy? Was that from Lenora saying that she wants her painting back? I don't know. It was a little confusing. And I still don't know why Mabel wasn't texted to get out of the building in the first place. If she was surprised that Mabel went to her room, I would think that Mabel would be the one person you make sure you text. We also didn't see any more of Nina or her partner. I liked both of the characters as little as we saw them. And though it looks like next season will have a big focus outside of the building, I'm still interested to see if Nina is going to attempt to build that monstrosity above the Arconia. And hopefully we get to see a little bit more of them. Those are some questions I know we won't get answered, but there are plenty of loose ends that may be covered in future seasons. Distracted by an Next video emergency. will be out on Thursday or Friday, and that's where the winner of $50 of all murders in the building of fish merchandise Finally, will be awarded. If you show. want to get in on it, you just got to do it before I write the script, and the script is in process right now, so I'll say about one more day before the script is finished being written, and then I'll attempt to record it. All you need to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on any video. Will you guys be trying a liverwurst and marmalade sandwich, or are you stopping at a coca -tini? How happy were you with the finale? I personally think it was a lot wilder and out there than I ever expected. Please give me all your thoughts. Thank you for being here. It was a great end for season two. My name's Dallas, and I'll see you guys on the rooftop.